Bob, appreciate you. How you? Um, I'm sure you're finding a way to stay warm at home today. Everybody else is. How you doing? Bye. Sitting on a couch, so seeing all the snow, and don't don't plan to go anywhere today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that pretty much hits about just about everybody else. I think they would agree with you on that. Uh, Stanley Amude was the opposite of the weather uh, last night. Red hot. Six for eight long range, 31 points. This was uh, this was the Stanley Amude that I think Eric Musselman and his coaching staff and the fan base thought they would get every once in a while. I think they kind of expected more in the range of a consistent 13 to 17 point score along with the defense and rebounds. But do you, when you watched him last night, do you think that this is something that you can see a little more from Amude or maybe this was just an isolated, an isolated hot game? No, I mean, I certainly don't expect it to average 31 points the rest of the season. I hope nobody expects that. That's, but yeah, I think uh, he could be a more consistent score. You know, it's crazy. You know, he, he had 28 points earlier this year against Vanderbilt, I think it was. And he had a couple 19-point games, and he had some other games where he scored pretty well. But he also had two games where he was scoreless, which that was really a surprise to me because his freshman you know, remember this is his fifth year of playing. You know, he played four full seasons at uh, South Dakota. His freshman year, he, he didn't play a ton, and he had some games where he didn't score. But ever since then, he'd scored in every game. You know, I think it was 90 some straight games uh, when he didn't score against Charlotte this year. That streak was broken, and he'd, he'd had a lot of big games. I mean, he averaged 21, averaged 21.6 points last year. So, you know, and, and he'd had 41 last year. This was the seventh game with 30 or more. So he'd been a really consistent scorer. And I get South Dakota doesn't play in the SEC, but still, he'd been a, a very good scorer. And that, that's why Arkansas wanted him. He was a. Uh, you know, a hot commodity in the transfer portal. A lot of teams, I think, wanted him. Um, but one thing that's impressive, you know, Eric Musselman said after the game, obviously as well as Stanley played on offense, he thought that was his best defensive game. And, he, you know, one thing earlier in the season, he, he had some good scoring games. And, and Eric, you know, we'd say, hey, what about Stanley scoring? And he would bring up his lack of rebounding. Like, he needs to rebound more, and he's done a lot better job of that. He had 12 points and eight boards the other day against West Virginia and, and played 24 minutes. And after the game, you know, another nice win for Arkansas, and Eric Musselman brought up that, you know, he regretted that he hadn't played Stanley more minutes, you know, and um, so I think, you know, you're seeing a guy that's, who's, who's all around games come around, he's rebounding better, he's playing better defense, obviously he's scoring better, but yeah, I think a game like that, um, you know, as an older guy, a lot of experience, but I think it's got to take his confidence to another level, because this is the first season he's played at Arkansas and in the SEC. Is this, is this, at the top of the list of things that you think might, you know, le- help lead to a, a deep run like last year, or at least making a little bit of a run in in, uh, in March, is adding that second scorer, somebody that you feel you can count on, because that has been lacking. And we focus too much on the offense for a team that's defensive oriented, but still, you know, you you can't just rely on one guy. And while JD had a great game yesterday, an all around great game, you need to have a consistent second score and, and that I mean that's been that's been lacking at times, but and, and that's really the thing that I'm focused on for this really for this next month because I trust this team's defense. Uh, I trust that JD's gonna get out and score. I like how they rebound, I like how they control the paint. I just I just hadn't seen enough of a consistent second score. Well, yeah, and of course, Jalen Williams is, is emerging as more of an offensive threat. He's been a great rebounder. He's taken charges. He took, I think, three charges last night. He's taken 30 now, and there's a lot more season left. He might end up taking 50 charges or something before it's done. I'm surprised teams keep going at him, but I guess you got to try to get to the hole and, and, and try to draw fouls on him because if he gets in foul trouble, that's a big issue for Arkansas because you know, he, he only played 19 minutes last night, but he had 14 points and eight boards, I think it was, in two blocks. So, yeah, I think that sort of uh, trifecta, if you could, yeah, obviously J.D. Note is a consistent scorer, and Jalen's coming on, and then Amude, and then they have other options. Um, I think it was big last night that Chris Likes had a good game. He's a guy that had some pretty good games early in the season. I think he had 26 um, in one of the games in Kansas City on the stats in front of me, but um, you know, he, he'd had some struggles with turnovers, and Eric, understandably, was not playing him a whole lot. And then he, he had a pretty good uh, short stretch against West Virginia, 
And then he had a nice stretch last night, nine points on the first half and seven assists. I think he had three assists in the second half. So um, I think it's important that likes, uh, you know, continue, continue to come on, get back to what he was doing earlier. Uh, uh, Adis Tony has had a really uh, good run of games here of late. He was a big factor early and, and kind of had a bit of a slump and, but, but yeah, Moody is a guy that you really like to say he's a guy you thought, I think he came in that game averaging 20 or 10 points. He's a guy you thought maybe would be averaging 15. Um, so if he can score on a more consistent basis with well, the other things he's given, that's really big. But what I like most about this team is the way they're playing defense. Now they didn't play defense very well in the first half last night. They got back to it in the second half and really clamped down on Georgia. So, you know, no matter who's scoring or what you're shooting or whatever, you know, defense is, is a consistency you can have no matter what you're doing. The offense can come and go sometimes. Defense, you know, is can, can always be there if you're playing it with intensity, and this team is do, has been doing that for, for a long period now. Yeah, Bob, that's the thing when it comes to the defensive end of the floor. You don't really need those lucky bounces. You don't need to be extremely hot that day to be able to knock down or keep another team from scoring. You, you just got to play hard and you got to have that intensity and that drive, one thing that we saw last night was the extreme. We've seen the extreme the other way earlier in the season when they shot 0%, got a big old fat goose egg from the on the arc last night shooting 53.6%, 15 made field goal, free throw, uh, three pointers. I don't know why it took me three different basketball terminologies to get that out there. But I don't think it's realistic to say that this team's going to be at 0%. I also don't think this team's it's realistic to say this team's going to be at 53%. Is it realistic, especially what we've seen the last few games, that going forward we can expect somewhere around the 33% mark, which is kind of what all teams aim for, is to at least be a be a one out of three, three-point shooting team? Well, one thing Eric has said all year, and of course like most, if not all teams, they have close practices, but that they've shot the ball pretty well from three in practice or at least a lot better than they have in games. Um, and of course, you know, games are different. You're, you're playing somebody else and there's more intense intensity probably on the defensive end, but, um, but maybe not. Arkansas is probably pretty intense in practice on defense, I would think. But, um, yeah, maybe the odds are just catching up, up with them. But yeah, I mean, you gotta remember they beat South Carolina by 16 without hitting a three. And then like I said, they hit a bunch of threes last night. So, you know, ideally, I think if you're Arkansas, you'd like to average, you know, five or six makes a game. Um, but 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 their uh, their calling card is attacking the basket. You know, they lead or they're right at the top nationally in free throws made and attempted. And the weird thing was last night, I think they were mm. four or seven. But obviously, yeah. they hit the three, so that made up for it. But but they've been really good at you know, attacking the basket, drawing fouls, and then when they get to the line, hit, hitting them. I mean, as a team, they're shooting close to seventy five percent. Um, which in this day and age is, is, is really, really good, especially when you're shooting at a high volume. I mean, they've had a lot of games where they hit, you know, 20 plus free throws. I mean, made, not attempts, but actually makes. Uh, I think of one game recently they hit 27 out of 33. So they're, they're a team that, um, I think that, that they're off, their best offense is attack in the basket and, you know, either scoring in the paint or getting free throws or, or getting three point plays. But obviously it helps if you can hit some threes. And I, I think they're, you know, I think they're a good enough team to shoot 30 some percent. Um, and, you know, but last night, I think that was a rarity. I hope people don't expect me to hit 15 mm-hmm. every game. Yeah, I don't think anybody in their right mind would actually expect any basketball team to, you know, go over 50% from beyond the arc, especially when it's 15 free throws made. A few weeks ago, when this winning streak really started going, getting around the, the four win streak mark, you kind of start to look ahead thinking that. All right, they're starting to really pick it up. They've gotten over 500 in, in conference play. And you, you look ahead on the schedule and think, man, there's a real chance that Arkansas could be riding an eight game win streak going into the Auburn game. And you're only one game away from that Mississippi State this Saturday from having that eight game win streak to play Auburn on Tuesday. What's the main thing you think they still have to work out and kind of nail down on Saturday to give not just you know, the team, but I think everyone that will be in attendance on Tuesday at Bud Walton Arena, real confidence that not only that can they play with the number one team in the country, but can actually beat them. Well, yeah, first of all, again, I overlooked Mississippi State because, of course, Mississippi State beat them 
open SEC play. Now, J.D. Note did not play in that game. He, he was uh, he didn't make the trip because he was in uh, COVID safety protocols. But, um, yeah, Mississippi State's a pretty solid team. I know they got beat pretty badly at Texas Tech in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. But a lot of, you know, Texas Tech put it on Texas, too. Yeah, Texas Tech is really, really good. I'm not sure why all their fans are so upset that Chris Beard left the way they're playing. I think the way they were so uh, hateful the other night, I thought it was sort of an insult to their own team that is better than, than Texas right now. And, and Mark Adams is doing a great job as their as their coach. But that that being said, um, Mississippi State, I think, will be a tough game. You know, they, like say they've already beaten Arkansas once. Uh, it'll be a huge win. You know, Mississippi State's kind of a bubble team. They're their net's probably right around 50, so it would be a huge win for them to get it at the Walton Arena. Um, but I think with Arkansas, you just want to you, you want to, you want the defense to, to get back to, you know, not that first half of Georgia, but like it's been, you know, during this winning streak otherwise, the second, like it was in the second half, like it was in those first six wins. And I think you like to see, uh, you know, the bench helping out more. Like I said, Chris Likes has been playing better. Devo Davis has been pretty good off the bench. Uh, Kamani Johnson's healthy now after missing some time with an ankle injury. He's kind of your, your, your big off the bench in the rotation. So I, I think you just want to keep, uh, you know, seeing a, a good, you know, the, the, the rotation established. Obviously, you, you want to see Note and Jalen Williams stay out of foul trouble because that really hurts them when those guys aren't in. And I just, I think, just keep playing like, like they have. And obviously, it would help to hit, you know, shoot better from the perimeter. But I don't think that they, they've proven they don't have to do that to win. Mm-hmm. It would obviously help, against, especially against teams like Mississippi State and Auburn. Bob, I'm also sensing a little bit of a theme here in staff or administrator injuries and team success. It's unfortunate when you think of it this way because Hunter Juracek needed stitches on his face after getting a cleat to the to the nose in, in, in fall practice. Football ended up with one of the best seasons they've had in a while. Basketball has won seven straight since Eric Musselman underwent shoulder surgery. And I'm just kind of, I almost want to text the baseball coaches and say, you guys might want to walk around Baum Stadium with a helmet at some point once you get back to uh, to proper weather. But I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of a theme here. They haven't lost since Musk had the surgery. Yeah, they actually, you know, he they, they beat Missouri to start the streak, then he had the surgery. So, but yeah, Eric, you know, it's funny. He comes on the Zooms after every game, and he, like I say, looks like Sandy Koufax icing down his left shoulder. He's got that <laughs> breath. Um, and, uh, um, I, I, I admire that he's, uh, basically, you know, playing in, in a lot of pain. You know, we, p- people ask him about the shoulder and uh, he never says, oh, it feels great. It feels much better. It's like, yeah, it feels like somebody's sticking a pin in my shoulder or something. Um, so hopefully it is getting better. I mean, hopefully the surgery did some good, although he's, you know, really, he probably, you know, shouldn't have come back as fast as he did, but I think, <laughs> excuse me, it's just a testament to his toughness and to his, you know, dedication to the team and to the job. I, I think it would be more painful for him not to coach the team than, than it is to coach the team even when his his shoulder is bothering him. So um, it's good. He got, I think everybody would agree it's good. He got the surgery, didn't wait. Um, I think he is getting to maybe sleep a little bit better, and that's helping. He does seem uh, happier after games. Of course, they're winning. But I remember after that South Carolina game, I mean, he just looked wiped out. He, I, he came in the interview room, and, and he just, you know, he, he, he was in a lot of pain. And I, I'm sure he's still in pain, but I think, you know, winning winning's probably the, the, the best medicine, you know. Well, at least it's not his fist-pumping hand, so he can move that right hand around a little bit better. Bob, appreciate you, man. Uh, enjoy. Enjoy the time home and the snow outside and the big game on Saturday, and we'll look forward to talking next week. Okay, you guys take care. Appreciate it, Bob. All right, thank you. That's uh, Bob Holt, Democrat Gazette. No, Jody and Harrison, we do not need to break Dave's nose. We do not need that. I was just joking. Thank you very much. Brought to you by Riley Farm Dental. Our friends Dr. Bo Sparkman and Dr. Brogan will help every patient with better lives and comfortable experiences. They'll provide every dental procedure that you need, including braces, implants, and cosmetics. All the simple stuff, too. That's Riley Farm Dental. Best of the best. Top three for the last four years. You can go to RileyFarmDental.com, call for an appointment at 226-3500, or visit them at 5901 Riley Park Drive, Suite A, right at the entrance of Riley Farms. 
Wrapping up the first hour of halftime right after this. Might be less football being played, but Bet Online has way more stuff to bet on this playoff season. From scored, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022. And with the new year comes a new updated desktop and mobile website. Sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's B. L-E-A-V. And it's not just football. Bet Online's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC odds coverage is the best in the business. From sports, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts. 